Hey you all, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Today's video is a review of three products from Indeed Labs. The first one is the Hydraluron Jelly. Then we have the Isilix 2 Total Eye Rescuer. And of course, Nano Blur, the Viral Euphoria Makeup Primer. I am gonna take you through my journey of trying these products out a couple of times in a couple of different ways. But if you're interested in a particular product out of these three, I'll do my best to have detailed timestamps below so you can skip ahead to anything that you want to. Another thing to note is that I will be testing these products as makeup prep skincare rather than like long-term corrective benefits type skincare, although they are like a skincare brand. But this video is gonna be focused on like how these make my makeup look. If you're new here, my name is Sophie. I'm a licensed esthetician and a makeup artist. So I really like topics where I can be both. And this video is definitely on one of those topics. So if you wanna actually learn more about beauty and beauty products and techniques from my perspective, then go ahead and subscribe. It's free and give this video a thumbs up so I know that you want to see more videos like these. All right, so let's just get into it. So here's the deal. I just waxed and tweezed my face, so I'm very red, and I'm trying some new things with lighting. Hopefully it doesn't mess with anything, but my guess is it won't, it, like it couldn't possibly be as shitty as my lighting usually is. So anyways, let's get into it. So the first product I'm gonna try on and review from Indeed Labs is the Hydraluron <laughs> Moisture Jelly featuring hyaluronic acid and patch 2O. What is patch 2O? So this is free from fragrances, colorants, denatured alcohol, and it's vegan. It says free from vegan, but I think they just mean vegan. Let's read the claims on the back. Hydraluron Moisture Jelly uses a combination of five scientifically proven ingredients to help provide instant and sustained moisture to the skin. Instant, that is the key word for me. I am mainly trying these products as prep products for makeup application. But if it has long-term skincare benefits, then that's also fantastic. Anyways, filled with high molecular weight hyaluronic acid and patch 2.0, this refreshing jelly helps to lock in moisture and prevent moisture evaporation, leaving skin soft, supple, and glowing. Okay, I feel like this brand has a good grasp on how we categorize different types of skincare products. Like I love that this product is a moisturizer, so it's designed to be a finishing step in your routine. So the high molecular weight in the hyaluronic acid in this is going to not penetrate as deep as something with a low molecular weight. So for treatment purposes, yeah, a serum with a lower molecular weight that penetrates into the skin could be more ideal for like correcting dehydration, but for preventing dehydration and giving your skin that instant glow, a high molecular weight that sits on top of the skin that doesn't absorb as deeply and that locks in moisture all day, that is what we want for like a priming moisturizer. So I love that and I feel like me and this brand are just on the same page, like I don't know. Okay, so let's get to applying it. Directions, apply a pea-sized amount, only a pea-sized, to a cleansed face in the AM and PM. Use daily and apply after Hydraluron Moisture Serum for optimal results. Um, I don't have that serum. I think serums are more like for corrective benefits and not necessarily for like makeup prep, so I didn't go that route. This packaging is so cool. Like the fact that it's clear, I mean, I don't think there's anything in here that would be like destabilized by light or anything, but it's really, really pretty. And I like that it has this little um, pop out of the top situation. Okay, let's see if we can get a little poppy action. Oh, did it come out? No. Oh, yay. Okay, and this looks like it dispensed a pea-sized amount. Um, some people's faces are bigger, some people's faces are smaller, so you may find that you need a little bit more or a little bit less, but I do really like that pumping mechanism for still having the luxury feeling of a jar um, without compromising the stability and sanitation of the product. I expected it to be a little bit more lightweight because we have this hyaluronic acid moisturizer from Dermalogica called Calm Water Gel and that one um, 
is a water gel, whereas this is kind of a sticky gel. It does not contain oil or anything like that, um, but it is really sticky. I would not like this as my moisturizer, but do I feel really good about putting makeup on top of this? Yes. A sticky base is always good for makeup, and that's definitely something that, like, my regular skincare routine lacks is like priming for makeup because to be honest I just don't care anymore like I just want to take the best care of my skin that I can usually but but you know as a makeup artist and as somebody who is getting married this year um, I'm really excited to kind of switch gears all right let's zoom in and see what's going on I have a little bit of period skin going on and I did just tweeze the crap out of my face so um, don't mind the redness. I wouldn't say it helped to take down redness at all. And I don't feel like particularly dewy. Just for fun, I'm gonna apply one more pea size amount and I'm gonna work a little bit more quickly this time and like intentionally because, okay, there we go. I feel like I didn't get it spread adequately when I like applied the first layer because I was like, I don't know, expecting it to be more spreadable. Pretty sticky, like I would not like putting this on before bed, I'm gonna be honest. So if you were watching this video like in hopes that you would find like everyday skin products, I mean these are reasonably priced with really nice ingredients, um, but first impression of this moisturizer, it stays sticky and um, I wouldn't use it as just a moisturizer unless I was priming for makeup, I think. Okay, next, I'm excited about this too. I like anything that like instantly fills in wrinkles. Like I like the idea of it for my makeup kit and just even for applying on myself before I apply makeup. So this is the Isilix 2 Total Eye Rescuer for fine lines and crow's feet. So on the back, it says, formulated with neodermal, this advanced eye cream helps to smooth fine lines and wrinkles while reducing the appearance of dark circles and puffiness. This all-in-one eye cream with powerful peptides, ceramides, extracts, and probiotics targets your daily eye concerns. Directions. After cleansing, gently pat small amount around the contour of your eye. Use daily in the AM and PM for optimal results. Okay. Based on the description and the ingredients, this looks like it's going to be great to prep for under eye concealer. Um, anything with peptides tends to have like a depuffing and filling effect. It really, it depends on the, the peptide. And I'm assuming the trademarked neodermal ingredient is a peptide. Um, let's look that up right now. Neodermal. According to PharmaWell, I will link this source down below, Neodermal is an anti-aging ingredient developed by Induchem companies, which acts like a wrinkles filler by enhancing skin firmness and elasticity without needle injection. Yes, that is exactly what I need for the morning of the wedding when I say, what kind of look are you going for? And somebody shows me a picture of Kim Kardashian and I'm like, I'm not a plastic surgeon. So this is what the product looks like outside the box. I probably should have used this before the moisturizer, but I didn't really get too much product around my eye area. So it just says to use a small amount, um, but normally what I recommend for an eye cream is a grain of rice amount split between your two ring fingers for each eye. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. And using my ring finger and gentle tapping motions. Also, I wonder if this would work around the lips for like a more mature client or a smoker. So normally I don't get this close to my lash line with my eye cream, but just trying to see if that gives me like a more immediate effect. Let me zoom you in. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we need to give it a moment to work so let's try the nano blur primer and then we'll come back to the eye cream okay and finally the reason we're all here nano blur i had been seeing this on instagram so much and for some reason i was so intrigued probably because i was already in the mindset of investing a little bit more in the skin prep portion of my kit um, and then I saw this and they had a whole section for instant results and all of these were in that section, including Nano Blur. And then I thought about it and I was like, what? I never order silicone primers. Like I don't even believe in them, but like, I don't know, something they got me. I, I don't know what they said that like made me want to try it or like 
if I'm like enchanted by the fact that it's like used on the set of Euphoria or whatever. I don't know what made me buy this, but here we are and we're trying it even though I hate silicone primers and like was so loyal to the Tarte one for so long, but like lately, I don't know. Anyway, let's read what's on the box. Nano Blur Skin Blurring Cream. Oh, that's the other thing. It was a cream. That intrigued me. For all skin types featuring Nano Optic Prism Complex. Okay, and that, I remember now reading that. That also sounds really like, I, I you know, I want my skin to be a prism. On the back of the box, it says Nano Blur, developed to provide high definition looking skin. This unique skin perfecting finishing cream uses light diffusing technology to create flawless skin anywhere, anytime. It's that simple. Helps to correct the appearance of skin aging, including the look of fine lines, wrinkles, and crow's feet. Targets and visibly improves the look of pores while reducing shine. Let's just try it. Maybe, I, I, I don't know, I might, I might be converted today. I might like, become a primer user. Will this primer make me a believer? Also, I love the packaging. I love like clean with pops of color. That's kind of like uh, very modern to me and an inspiration behind how I decorated my studio as well. Directions, for best results, follow these application methods. Oh, okay, this I also really wanted to test. So it says without makeup, apply over moisturized skin, which we have, um, and then with makeup, pat gently over liquid foundation or under pressed or loose powder. So basically you can use this after your liquid foundation and then set the whole thing with powder or not. And like, apparently it's this whole thing setting powder is not used on Euphoria. And I think most makeup artists can agree that like setting powder is just like a necessary evil. But today we are gonna find out if it is still necessary in today's day and age when we have technology. Let's just get some on the back of my hand. This is probably too much, but I really want to see and show you all what it looks like. So it very much looks like a combination between like a dimethicone silicone primer and some sort of cream. It's kind of like pudding. It feels like some sort of smoothing dimethicone thing without having a powdery finish. And a lot of those either have a powdery finish or they stay like super slick on the skin and cause your makeup to slide off. But like the Tarte one that I like has a really powdery finish. So I, I try not to use it on dry skin. It's really good for filling in pores, but like when you have enlarged pores on dry skin, it doesn't always work the best. So this does have a touch of like surface moisture that it's leaving behind. Okay, I'm really excited to try this. Okay, let's actually put it on my face this time. Just taking a small amount and I'm gonna start in the center of my face. So I'm kind of applying it as I would a pore filling primer where I'm like mashing it into the skin a little bit. But that mashing, like, I don't like to do that <laughs> like on a client because it takes so much time, like precious, sec like 30 seconds is precious to me the morning of a wedding. But if I could get something that blends out a lot easier and I don't have to worry about it getting on a dry patch and like messing everything up, which is like what stresses me out about using the Tarte primer as much as I do love it, sometimes stuff like goes wrong when I'm using it. So if I could use this for a similar purpose, but have it be a little more foolproof because it doesn't have that powdery finish or that like solid firm texture. I'm putting on more than I would normally with like a pore filling or line smoothing primer. However, it's not really like pilling up the way a, a dimethicone primer wood or silicone primer, especially thicker ones with a more powdery finish. Okay, it feels really good. It hasn't like diminished the slightly tacky moistness of the moisturizer, the Hydraron Jelly. Hydraron. But it has mattified my skin. You know what, I am getting a tiny bit of pilling out here from applying multiple layers of the jelly. So just be mindful of that because it is a little bit sticky. Like it's not as spreadable as like, you know, Dermalogica Calm Water Gel, which is like what I was expecting it to be more like. So yeah, just be mindful that it 
it's not going to layer the best. So I would probably, if the skin is really dry, I would still moisturize with like an Embryo Lease or, or Skin Smoothing Cream from Dermalogica, Calm Water Gel from Dermalogica, like something like that, where you really have an opportunity to like spread it and press it into the skin and like really deliver that like hydration with your hands before it starts to pill up. So yeah, I would definitely still, if somebody like needs moisturizer, if they come in and have like perfectly smooth, freshly moisturized skin, I'm not going to like wipe their whole face off and just put on more moisturizer. Like no, they just did their skincare routine and like came downstairs and now they're getting their makeup done. But like if somebody needs to have their skin prepped, I would still moisturize and then put on the Indeed Hydroluron Hydro Jelly. So let's apply some foundation on camera like together so we can see like how it goes on, how it blends, and just like how it looks freshly applied over top of all of these Indeed Labs products. So I kind of debated which foundation to use, but I'm gonna go in with like a tried and true, um, which is a good way to like test new products is to pair them with your products that you know work well most of the time. So this is the Dermablend Flawless Creator. I do have a review on this. I will link it for you. A little bit goes a long way with this foundation. So I'm really only taking like half a dropper's worth. And all of my big brushes are dirty. So I'm using um, a setting brush from Real Techniques. Okay, I do not like this. It's really possible that like doing a full coverage foundation with a small brush um, is not the move. For whatever concoction I've used on my face. Oh my gosh, it looks so bad. Look, like I can't get this spot to blend out. That is so weird. Um, I really want this to work, so I am going to try it with a different foundation. Maybe this foundation, like, is not working for me right now. I don't know. It looks so patchy. Like, it looks so not good. Oh my god. I'm appalled, actually. Let me try another foundation. Okay, so I'm taking a clean brush and face atelier. Uh, Ultra Foundation in number three. This is a beautiful foundation. I use this for wedding makeup because it's stunning. And this is the Real Techniques Contour Brush. <gasps> it looks so bad. You know what? It mattified my skin too much. Like, my skin is not oily, so <sighs> it doesn't look good. Look how it's like patching up on my forehead and my forehead is like not super pimply or wrinkly. Ugh, it looks so bad. Okay, I was gonna film another video, but I actually don't know if I can with this horrible makeup. I also don't feel like my pores are filled in. Oh my gosh, am I bad at makeup? Like, I feel like I'm bad at makeup right now. You don't necessarily need a primer to fill in pores. You can swirl foundation into the pores, which sounds disgusting, but well-behaved women rarely make history. It looks so bad. I'm so sad. I was so excited. You know what? I am so determined and I also have to film another video after this and I look like trash. So I am going to wash my face, try it again, but like with less product and like we'll see if that helps.
I have massaged that cream into my face. My face is so red. I like can't wait for this to be over. I think it's time to go in with the eye cream and the Hydrolyron. And then I think I'll just use the Nano Blur on one side. I'm trying to see if I like see an instant difference between the two eyes. I don't, I really don't. And I'm just gonna put a little bit right here as well. And I'll be sure to mash it in real good. You know what, let's just do this one side with the eye cream and the other side with the Nano Blur. But before that, we're gonna go in with the Hydra Luron. This is very viscous. Like, feels a little bit like hair gel. All right, and let's see what happens when I apply a little bit of foundation, like fresh. That is so much better. Okay, I feel so much better, y'all. This, this is actually nice. Okay, that looks fabulous. I actually really, like it and i am not one to fudge the truth when it comes to this stuff because i actually work on clients and like you can exaggerate on social media but you can't exaggerate in real life so anything that i give a good review has the potential to go in my kit so that's what i'm always thinking when i'm reviewing makeup i need makeup to work like i literally need makeup to work you know what happened before was like such a letdown okay here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna put a really small amount um, in like my t-zone area on this side of my face and then I'm gonna try a little bit of it over the foundation on this side and we'll see if I like it better as a finishing cream rather than a priming cream. Okay, can you tell I'm traumatized? This is the amount I'm using. I am treating this like the problematic silicone primer that it is. It could work if I don't treat it like a lotion. If I treat it like spackle, just filling in some of my forehead lines. I have not been doing new face. I'm embarrassed. A little bit on my chin and in my nasolabial fold. Let me get a clean makeup brush. I'm using more padding motions as to not like lift or disturb the primer. And then here where I didn't apply the Nano Blur, I can uh, be a little bit more free and effleurage with my strokes. Okay, so it I just tried swiping on my forehead and that did kind of like remove and like patch off the foundation. Um, and I did put Nano Blur on this side. so. Uh, stippling padding is the way to go with the Nano Blur. If you are blending foundation on top of it, you have to use a padding motion. It patched off right here and I'm having trouble blending over that spot and making it seamless again. Okay, both sides look good. This side is not too flat, but it's definitely more matte than this side. I think I like everything. It's interesting. So on this side, I put the eye cream on my nasolabial fold and um, this side actually looks wrinklier than this side to me. Uh, and on this side, I put Nano Blur. But I put Nano Blur on my like forehead wrinkles and I don't think it helped in that instance. So a lot of what's happening is like not adding up to me. I'm gonna be a little naughty and take some of the Dermablend foundation, which is full coverage, and see if I can like spot cover because it's pretty close to um, the Face Atelier number three. Okay, so let's try and cover this area. The area where I put the Dermablend does not look good, and I don't know if that's me or like the priming moisturizing jelly. So far, my favorite zone in my face is actually right here, which is somewhere where you can like see my pores, but the skin just looks so fresh right here, um, and even on my forehead right here, that I don't mind, because it honestly just looks really pretty and like, 
fresh and healthy and soft. And like human beings have pores. So like it's not, uh, as long as we're not like enhancing the appearance of them, I don't mind seeing a little bit of pore for like a natural look, you know? See how I have like a natural highlight coming through. The Face Atelier Foundation, by the way, also is helping to give this really nice finish. So I don't love this area, which is where I put a little bit of the Derma Blend on. So the Hydraluron Jelly isn't enough to like hydrate my skin for a heavier foundation like the Derma Blend one. That's what I'm gathering right now. And then I actually think the Nano Blur did as good of a job blurring pores. Also softened this appearance of this nasolabial fold unless like does this one just naturally have less wrinkles? I don't know. But I like am motivated after this try on to experiment with these products more. But so far, my favorite combination is the Hydroluron Jelly with the Face Atelier Ultra Foundation on top. I don't love it with the Derma Blend Foundation on top, and I don't love the Nano Blur with uh, the Face Atelier Foundation on top. So the last thing we're gonna try is Nano Blur on top of foundation. So I'm gonna get a little more Nano Blur and I'm really gonna take the smallest bit. Like I don't want it to be globbed onto my finger or anything. I really just want to apply a thin layer. So let's try on top of my pores here. No, no, that did not work. Let's try on top of my forehead wrinkles. Again, no, it, it just like enhances my pores in like a not cute way. Okay, last thing. Let's try over this nasolabial fold. No, it ended up picking up the foundation actually. This is too finicky, I'm sorry. Like this is not gonna replace setting powder. Like I can put setting powder on top of foundation and make it look good. Um without having to try too hard, you know? You know, you press, sweep, buff, do what you gotta do, setting spray, do a little sponging. Like, you make it work with the setting powder and it ends up looking good. Like, but this just like kind of ruined my foundation. Okay, the stars on Euphoria must have like perfect but also oily skin. That is my conclusion here with the Nano Blur. And I don't think the eye cream really did anything, um, but let's see if I notice a difference with my concealer on. So I'm going to finish my makeup and come right back. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. 
Overall, I'm a little disappointed. I don't think that my under eyes are doing better with that eye cream. If anything, they might be doing a little bit worse. But I do weirdly think it helped with this nasolabial fold on this side. I don't know. Now that my makeup is all done and I did put concealer over the nano blur on this side, which originally I had just put nano blur over my makeup, um, both sides look really similar now. So I think that means that I like nano blur for underneath makeup. I still don't love what it did. Yeah, I really don't like what it did to my forehead on this side. I think it just looks um, kind of like patchy and like you can see my pores. Like it, it just did like the opposite of what it was supposed to do. You can tell that like the makeup is kind of gripping on there. Like I can feel it. It doesn't look like there's a layer of it on top of my face that's going to like slide around everywhere. Um, it looks a little bit like that on my forehead, but I feel like a lot went wrong on my forehead. Honestly, I feel so conflicted. If you already have primers and stuff that you like, I wouldn't necessarily say these are worth running out and getting. Maybe I'll come across a situation in my professional life where I feel more inclined to use them on a client than my own skin. But like if my wedding were tomorrow, would I use them? Probably not. Let me know if you want to see like another video with these products, like an update after I've been using them for a while. It's kind of weird. I like don't know how to close out this video because like I feel like they need to be used like in very specific ways and like I don't know. I'm just like a painter. Like when I do makeup, I just like go for it, you know? I don't know. Something about them like is getting on my nerves, but I definitely want to try them more because I want to be a prep queen. Hey you all, so quick update before I sign off this video. I tried the products again with a more natural foundation, which is the Revlon Color Stay. Um, I used the one for combination oily skin, so it's not gonna be as dewy as a dry skin foundation. However, with the jelly underneath and with the Danessa Myricks Vision Flush over top as my blush, which is a very dewy product, I should have some glow happening and I just don't. I have a little bit up here because I put the Tarte Shape Tape Glow Wand and some glitter, but if you look in here, my skin looks pretty dry, especially right here. And that's not like super normal for me, like it happens, but I would expect that like if I combine a natural finish foundation with a glowy primer and a glowy blush that it should be a little more glowy. Now on my forehead, I didn't use the Hydraluron jelly. I just used foundation and I was actually wearing makeup on my forehead all day. So when I got home, I tried to put the Nano Blur on top and it kind of worked fine. As you can see, it did not blur my giant forehead wrinkle that I have going on right now. Um, it kind of mattified shine around my eyebrows, but not like that much. Like, and it didn't patch up as much as it did with the Dermablend foundation. However, this finish is not better than one that I would get with a powder, especially if I were to use like an illuminating powder. So that's definitely um, my preference still. I don't think Nano Blur has replaced powders for me and I don't think it will. Anyways, just wanted to check in and let you know how these products worked with a more natural finish foundation. I think they didn't make my makeup look horrible like they did the first time. However, do I think they made a good enough difference that they would replace just using my moisturizer under my makeup or powdering after my makeup? No, I don't think that they will replace that. And the eye cream, I just don't notice a difference from it. I even got like a little whitehead under my eyes, but like that could have been from anything. I don't know, maybe I'll give it to my mother-in-law to like see if she likes it and notices a difference or my mom. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you want me to continue to try these products and test them on others and like see how they like them. 
I'm kind of over it though, to be honest. Anyways, this video was chaotic as hell. I'm gonna go. If you thought this video was like decent enough, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment like what you thought overall. Is anyone else feeling like just totally confused about how to feel about like what happened today? Let me know that as well. Again, my name is Sophie. I'm a makeup artist and an esthetician. And if you want to hear more about beauty from that perspective, then please go ahead and subscribe. It's free. All right, that is it. I will try and keep you all updated on these products, but otherwise I'll see you in my next hopefully less chaotic video. Bye.